I would say uh, good for us to get under the lights again and, and uh, have the starting lineup and everything. I could tell right from the start that we were it was a first for us for several guys. And they had that look on their face like it was the first time being on this floor and in front of a crowd. So uh, obviously appreciative of Northern Iowa coming over and, and obviously the intent behind the game and to be able to help Team Rubicon and, and uh, Jake Wood and his organization and what they do. Uh, nationally for all the disasters that take place. So um, I thought we did some good things. There's obviously a lot of things we had to clean up, but by and large, uh, I saw a lot of positive things. I would see a lot of energy from King and Davison off the bench, which I, I wasn't surprised by. But, uh, you know, we're, uh, you know, a, a good first step, but obviously things that uh, there will be a, a lot of things on film that we'll have to learn from and, and get better at. So um, look forward to the getting back in practice gym on Friday and Saturday and getting ready for Stout on Sunday. Greg, I know the caveat is that it's two exhibition games, um, but you said that you said about the Missouri performance that you were happy with defense, the defense, and tonight I would guess you feel the same way. What, what do you make so far about um, the team on that end of the court? Well, they've they've bought into the importance of it. Uh, we've we've definitely stressed it enough, and it's been a foundation of this program for a long time, and will continue to be. And I, I didn't think early we were great. I thought we let McLeod get too deep off double penetration at times. But once we got that kind of squared away and um, figured out where we could help from and and how to handle the ball screen situations, I thought we got better. And we we were. I thought there was a stretch in the second half. We were really good. I don't know exactly who was on the floor, but um, just looking down, there was no gaps at all. They could they tried to dribble drive on us, and they couldn't uh, at all. There was no room for them to go and contest most of the shots. And um, so they're they're learning. I, I think you can drill and drill and drill and put them in practice situations, but to be, have this tonight, you know, uh, is good. And obviously Saturday was good for us. Every experience they get, where it's kind of learn it on the fly and, and coach can't be there to blow the whistle and stop it to teach them different things. They figure it out on their own. Uh, and I think they've, they grew tonight. There's no doubt that this experience will help them as we move forward defensively. Jeff. Greg, on the, on the other end of the court, Ethan's been asked about anticipating double teams and how is he going to handle them and being surrounded by shooters. Uh, I don't know if you're changing your view or if you had this from the start, but do you think you're going to be able to surround have enough shooters out there where you're going to be able to make teams pay if they double team or if they try to really close things up? I, I would hope so. It still starts with the decisions he makes out of the double team. And I thought he did a good job tonight uh, for the most part of doing that. Uh, sometimes he over anticipates the double team at times too. And he's, he's seen a fair share of them in practice too. So he's been well prepared and teammates have done a good job of helping him get ready and, and other bigs too uh, that I don't think that'll be maybe not be the only guy. Uh, if that seems to be a trend right now in college basketball, as we're doing it, is trapping the post a little bit just to disrupt and and uh, keep a good offensive player. I thought we did that tonight with Cook. Uh, we got him a little uh, off kilter early, and um, so it's. But yeah, you still have to make shots around it. You know, it's one thing to get it out uh, out of the double team, but you had to make sure we have it the floor properly. Uh, spaced. We didn't a couple times in the second half. He, he wasn't the one. Ethan wasn't the one in the post. But um, we'll continue to work on that. Make sure. And then obviously it's the uh, the final thing is you got to make shots, and that always makes the execution out of any double team look really good. Is when you can make shots on the backside or on the top. Tom, Greg, do you have the kind of players that can make shots? It, it looks like, you know, even in, in Australia and New Zealand that you had different scores. Do you have the kind of scoring potential you you like, at least potential? I, I think so. I think we've got some pretty skilled guys that at a variety of positions. And um, so I think that'll I, – I want to make sure, and, and I've emphasized with them, not to have their game be hinged to whether the ball goes in for them or not. I don't want them to be emotionally attached to that, where if they're having a rough shooting night, they don't perform in other areas. And sometimes with younger players, they have a hard time. They connect that too much. They think I have to score in order to, if I only way I play well is if I score, where there's other ways you can impact the game. So I think with a variety of guys that we have, bigs and smaller guys that um, 
you know, regardless of position. We saw that with, as you mentioned, the foreign tour with having a, uh, a different leading scorer all the time. So we're starting to see that come, and I think they're getting more and more comfortable playing on the floor with each other in terms of where people are, what people's strengths are, what their weaknesses are. Um, so that'll be something that'll continue to grow. Hopefully, offensively, we evolve and continue to grow as the year goes on. We're nowhere near where we can be. Um, I want to make sure defensively we uh, have things in place and, and grow first. But offense will come as they get more accustomed to each other. Front. It just seemed like you had a lot of uh, faith in Aleem tonight. Is, was that just a product of the way he was playing, or has he shown you something this summer that gives you the the trust to play him for 16 minutes? Both. Uh, he's He practiced well here recently. I thought he played well Saturday against Missouri. He did some really good things, and um, you know he's been platooning back and forth between the scout team. We haven't set a, a specific um, badger rotation, so to speak. I've been shuffling guys back and forth, and he's been doing both. So he's done a good job of adjusting to that and uh, playing a scorer on the scout team and then come over and, and helping us out a little bit on, on my side of the floor. So he he's played well because I think he's practiced more consistently well. And that's those two always go hand in hand. You typically don't play well unless you practice well, and he's he's starting to figure that out. Greg, Ethan obviously didn't attempt any threes last year. He tried two tonight and made one. Is that part of his game that you see expanding or at least something you think might be more consistent this year? Um, we'll see. I mean, he's worked at it, but I know he understands that his game isn't attached to his ability to shoot threes. He's pretty good around the block, and uh, he knows that that's where his most effective work will get done and most of his work will get done. Um, so we'll see how many more of those. I don't, I don't know if I have anything up my sleeve to run for him for a three yet, but him, maybe he'll try to talk me into it. Coach, what do you think changed offensively after the first seven minutes and when King first hit the jumper and you went on the, the big 17 and run? Settled down. We were a little, we were nervous. We were, like I said, I could tell by looking at, Van Vliet, Iverson, and Pritzel on the bench before the starting lineups, they, you could tell they had to look like I'm starting my first game in the Cole Center. They had that little bit of, and they all uh, admitted they were a little, little nervous, and rightfully so. Hey, this is a big step for them uh, to do that. Um, so we made shots. We settled in. We made some shots. See, Kobe gave us a, a boost there off the bench and got us going a little bit, but just settled down and started to play how we can play. Greg, you mentioned doubling the post. Um, is, is that a thing that Andy should be able to do just because of his length? If he times it right and whoever he's doubling with, that that should be a weapon for you guys? It, it can be. I mean, you've, you've got to be quick to do it. You've got to be aggressive and physical with it. Uh, I think if you're hesitant with it or late, you're setting yourself up for a lot of trouble. Uh, and then obviously the rotations out of it, making sure that the rim is protected and how we handle the backside with how we – uh, stack and then how do we recover and go on the first pass and we gave up a three in the second half we were late coming out of it trice came out of it way too late and didn't react to the ball in the air so we got it we're still a work in progress with that and um but i i've seen it even when we used it last year i i've seen it have some positive effect and, and on a very good on very good post players so it, it may not be something we do all the time but something we'll continue to look at and and obviously, you got to practice it. You got to be really good at. And and the other thing for us doing it, we have to we see it offensively. So we got to get ready for it anyway. So it's kind of it serves two purposes. Tom, Greg, there were a couple of times you you had King playing small forward. You went small. What what kind of versatility do you have? Does he give you there? And Iverson as well. I, yeah. I didn't use Iverson at the four tonight, but I have, and I think that's the potential. I could use him, and and I had Ford at the four at one point, and I had Ford at the three. We were a little bigger at one point. So, hey, Kobe, I think Kobe, uh, Khalil, Aleem all give us the ability to be pretty interchangeable at the two, specifically Kobe. I haven't played him at the four at all yet, but I played him at the two and the three. And so if guys can play multiple positions, and it, and it makes us defensively a, a much more mobile. Um, the ability to switch a lot of things, specifically ball screens, um, and we're, we're longer and we're more active. So I think as, as they all get more experience together, that'll be
be something that we can continue to use as needed and obviously that's situationally and lineups and those type of things.